In the last tutorial, you learned that we use primitive types to store simple values like numbers, Boolean values, or single characters. In contrast, we use reference types to store complex objects, like data objects or mail messages. These are complex objects. Now in Java, we have eight primitive types that you have seen before. All the other types are reference types. Let me show you an example. So here in this program, first I'm gonna declare a primitive type. Let's say byte age equals 30. Now, declaring and initializing a reference type is slightly different from a primitive type. Let me show you. So let's type date. Now here in this tooltip box, which is called IntelliSense, we can see various classes that have date in their name. So IntelliJ is helping us complete our code by suggesting these class names. Now here we have a date class in this package, java.util. So this package contains a lot of utility classes that are useful in a lot of programs. We also have a date class in a different package, java.sql or SQL, which is used for programming databases. So this is the benefit of packages. We can have the same class, but in different packages. They don't conflict. So packages create a namespace for our classes, okay? Now, in this case, if we select the first date class and press enter or tab, IntelliJ automatically adds this line for us. Import java.util.date. So because currently we are in this package, in order to use a class from a different package, we need to import it. So here we are importing the date class in this package. We'll talk about packages in more detail in the future. So back to our date variable. Let's give this variable a name like now. Now we set this. Here we need to use the new operator to allocate memory for this variable. And this is one of the differences between the primitive and reference types. When declaring primitive types, we don't need to allocate memory. Memory is allocated and released by Java runtime environment. But when dealing with reference types, we should always allocate memory. Now we don't have to release this memory. Java runtime environment will automatically take care of that. So we use the new operator and then repeat the name of our class, in this case, date. And then we add parenthesis followed by a semicolon. In this example, this variable we have defined here is an instance of the date class. So this class is defined templates or blueprints for creating new objects, new instances. As another example, we can have a class called human and we can have objects like John, Bob, Mary, and so on. So an object is an instance of a class. Now these objects or these classes have members that we can access using the dot operator. So we can type now dot, and these are all the members defined in this class or in this object. For example, we have a method called getTime, and this returns the time component of this object. This is another difference between primitive types and reference types. These primitive types don't have members. So if you type age dot, we don't see anything. These items you see here are not members of age. They're code snippets which allow us to quickly generate code. For example, we can select 4i, and this automatically generates this block of code for us. We'll talk about this in the future. So. This age variable is a primitive type. It's not an object. It doesn't have any members. And that's why when we use the dot operator, we don't see anything here. Now let's delete this line and instead print the value of this data object. So once again, we can type system. This is a class. So we can use the dot operator to access its members. Here we have out, which is a field. And the type of this field is print stream, which is another class in Java. So once again, we can use the dot operator and call the print line function. Now let me show you a very cool shortcut. Instead of typing all this, we can use one of these code snippets. So we type S-O-U-T and press tab, and this generates this piece of code for us. All right, now let's pass our date object here. Note that I have not surrounded this variable with double quotes because this is a string. And if you run this program, we'll see now on the terminal. There you go. We don't want this. You want the value of our data object, not a label. So let's remove the quotes and run the program again. So here's the current date time on my machine. 